Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation on how to do a Linux from scratch on QEMU. Uh, my name is Michael Mullen and let's jump into it. So the agenda today is that I'm going to go over some notes about LFS itself. I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to do the LFS. Um, uh, and then I'm going to go through the process at, at which I do an LFS. Um, for the video, I'm not going to go through the whole entire LFS install because such a task takes, you know, five hours and it takes multiple nights because you kind of get tired and need to stretch and things like that. Um, but I'm going to set you out on uh, what I believe is the easiest path in which to do a, um, an LFS install. Now, of course, I'm doing an LFS on QMU and the result will be a QMU bootable image. Um, the reason why I do it on QMU is because it's it's much easier than doing it on a uh, um, um, on bare metal. And if you've seen my previous video, I have a way of taking an LFS QMU image and turning it into um, an ISO disk that you can use to install LFS on bare metal. So let's uh, go on to the notes. So I have three notes here. Um, is LFS small? It's smaller than many distributions. So it's smaller than CentOS, it's smaller than Ubuntu, it's smaller than Fedora or the other major um, distributions. But it's not the smallest that you can possibly do. There is, are other distributions, uh, Alpine Linux, for example, are absolutely tiny in comparison to LFS. Um, however, LFS, as it boots up, um, it does have a very small memory footprint. So for me, when I boot up LFS, uh, my memory footprint on it is about 50 megabytes, um, which is pretty darn good. Um, and the actual hard drive space that it takes up is around 850 to 900, um, depending on the extra things I put into it and um, the, 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 the sources that are being used. Um, is LFS secure? No, LFS is not secure. Um, you can audit the sources. Um, you can look at uh, everything is, uh, LFS is the quintessential um, open source distribution in that you can look at every single line of code that you compile for your operating system. However, there are nearly, there are around 100 packages. There might be 70, there might be 130, but 100 is a good number to go with. Um, and I doubt that a single person is going to audit each and every one of them. Um, LFS as documented doesn't install many security features such, such as SE Linux, um, PAM. It doesn't do encrypted drives. Um, and then if you want to get deeper into security, it doesn't do verity of your hard drives. Um, it, it's out of the box, it's not secure. Now you can start doing, you can start adding security features to your LFS, but I'm going to point you to the next, uh, um, next, uh, next issue here is that security is a holistic discipline. Um, security involves not just auditing the software that you're using, auditing the source code of the software that you're using, but building that software in a secure way using secure um, compiler flags. Um, and it also means um, using in-depth, uh, security in-depth features. So not only do you, do you have um, your discretionary access controls, so your read-write executes on each, each file, but you have SC Linux doing mandatory access controls. You, you have a, a proper firewall set up um, you, you not only have to do those things, but you have to keep your, your software up to date. You have to monitor for, um, CVEs and you have to ensure that each and every one of your pieces of software have, uh, proper configurations for them. So for example, if you screw up your, um, your SSH, um, your SSH configuration, um, that's a problem. Um, and all of these things combined in my opinion, is um, a bigger task than a single person can undertake on their own. And that's why people pay for companies like Red Hat, for Red Hat 
uh, Enterprise Linux. Um, Red Hat has a gigantic team of very competent, very knowledgeable software developers um, doing all these tasks for you to ensure that you have the best possible and uh, the best possible um, experience with the most possible security um, that an operating system can give you with some caveats. Um, and those caveats are like Android is a more secure operating system than, than Red Hat Enterprise Linux because it does things like um, um, file system uh, verity and things like that. Um, however, that, that's kind of besides the point here. Um, yeah, so, so LFS Linux, uh, Linux from scratch is not secure and doing security is a bigger task than a single person can do for an LFS system. Um, Next point, is it fast? Um, as directed, the binaries um, resulting from doing a Linux from scratch are not gonna be faster than the binaries that you get out of um, Ubuntu or out of Red Hat or out of Fedora, things like that. Um, other speed optimized um, distros such as ClearOS or uh, Gentoo with the proper C flags and use flags uh, is going to wring a few more percentages out of those binaries. Um, However, because LFS is so minimal uh, um, from, from, from start to command line is extraordinarily fast. So we're, we're talking about two or three seconds um, and you're, you're up into a command line. Um, you don't have to go into GDM and then uh, get your X server going and then jump into GNOME or anything like that. Um, it is fast if, if you just have you know uh, um, very small command line uh, tasks that you need to do. But it's not as fast as as Gentoo or, or or Clear OS. It can be made fast, uh, and you can do that by playing around with the the C flags for each of the um, the packages that you install. So one thing that you can do is instead of using the um, the the default um, um, mArch um, parameter of x86, um, you can use the mArch parameter of native. And that'll speed things up for you. Instead of using uh, most packages uh, default, uh, C flags are dash G dash O2. Um, while O2 is pretty fast and um, LFS does get you to strip out the, um, the, the debug sim symbols that dash G gives you, um, you, can, you can have faster compile flags such as dash O fast and things like that. Um, but out of the box, as it's described, uh, LFS doesn't do those things for you. So my suggestions about doing uh, a Linux from scratch. Um, given the previous statements, um, you're building an LFS not to have a running operating system that you, you use for your, your Steam account and you use for your creating presentations and the like and that, that sort of thing. Um, LFS should not be a workstation machine because it's, it's much too difficult to maintain. So, you, you, you've heard a lot of people complaining about how difficult Arch is to maintain or how difficult Gentoo is to maintain. LFS is on another level entirely from those two, um, from those two distros. Um, you don't do, uh, um, when you want to upgrade your system, you're not doing just a, a Pac-Man dash uh, SYYU or anything like that. You're, you're going through each and every packet, each and every um, website hosted by uh, um, GNU or hosted by GitHub or things like that and seeing if there's up, uh, updates. You're taking a look for if there's CVEs and you're, you're then doing, um, you're recompiling the packages that you did during your first install. So it's, 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 it's too much work for a, a workstation machine. Um, and of course, um, because you're a single a uh, person working on this for yourself, it should never be used for a production machine because, you, like I said, you just can't keep up with the security requirements of a production machine. You need a team behind you to do that. So I don't suggest doing like a full, um, full like GUI enabled operating system with Linux from scratch. Um, there is another project, kind of a sub project of Linux called, from scratch called beyond Linux from scratch, BLFS, that can instruct you on how to get yourself a, a running KDE or a running GNOME distribution. 
Um, and if you want to learn about those packages, then Linux from scratch is perfect for learning about those things. However, if you're doing this um, at, for a running operating system, um, you're, you're wasting your time because that operating system will be, uh, all the work that you did will, will be put out of date in a few months. Um, and it's, you're, you're not going to enjoy your, like the first time you do it, you're going to enjoy it because it's, it's fun to learn things. But once the learning is over and once it becomes a chore, you're no longer going to install, you're, you're no longer going to enjoy it. And you will enjoy running, um, say, Arch or Fedora or Ubuntu much more than you will enjoy running an LFS. Uh, with that said, it's in my opinion that if you really want to learn Linux, you should do LFS at least twice. The first time that you do LFS, you should just cut and paste from the book. Uh, don't worry about why you're doing what you're doing. Just do it. The second time you're doing it, you're going to read about what you're doing and read about why you're doing it. And the reason why I suggest doing it this way is because that's how I learn the best. Um, I learn, so when I'm, when I'm starting up a new software project um, that, that like I'm not, I'm not starting myself, that I'm not writing from scratch, um, I want to just jump into, I want to run a, a, a make, and then I want to run the project just to see how it runs. After that, I want to start diving into the nitty gritty details. But I want those nitty gritty details after I've kind of done the, 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 um, the, the surface level work of like, um, how can I get it to run and how do I run it? So that's what that first, that first time you're doing the LFS is for. It's, it, it's getting that, that first build, getting the, the, how do you make the product and how do you uh, run the product after it's made? And then you, the, then you jump into, oh, what does this compiler flag mean? What does this config flag mean? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, so let's get on with it. Um, the first thing that you do uh, for doing an LFS on QMU is that you're going to create two hard drives. Uh, the first hard drive is for the install machine, and the second hard drive is for LFS itself. So let's jump onto a command line and do that task. So I've got myself here, um, and I am going to create two, two, hard, two QMU based hard drives. So QMU image create dash F. Let's, uh, let's zoom this in so better. QCOW2, and then the name of the, the drive. So I'm going to call the first one fed.image, and I'm going to make it 20 gigabytes in size. And then I'm going to do a QMU image create dash F QCOW2. And this is for LFS. And I'm only going to give this 10 gig. So the nice thing about uh, QMU here is that you'll notice that those two drives that I, that I created aren't 20 gigabytes and 10 gigabytes in size. The, the QCOW2 file system grows as you need it to grow. So that's, uh, that's very nice. So the next thing that we, we do is we install a full featured operating system. And that operating system I'm going to call the installer operating system. Uh, I might mistakenly call it the host sometimes. Um, when I say that, please understand. Uh, so the real host is my bare metal machine, which is running Fedora 32. The installer operating system is also going to be using Fedora 32 because uh, I've done the LFS before with that and I know that it works. Um, and then LFS is going to be the target operating system. Um, I'm going to try and use the installer operating system as much as I can, but I'm sorry if I, if I mistakenly call it the host. Um, when we install the installer operating system, we want to be as minimal as possible. Um, we don't want fancy GUIs. We don't need a whole bunch of different, um, uh, different tool sets that, that LFS doesn't need. Um, and LFS, as part of, uh, as part of the, um, the book, tells you what exactly it needs. Uh, so what we what we really need here is just Vim and SSH. 
and then we can get everything afterwards. So I'm going to start up installing uh, Fedora 32, and once it goes into the, the boring part of it, we'll pause and we'll come back afterwards. So I hope that I have stored Fedora here. Yes, I have, I've, I have not saved a Fedora server. Yeah, I've got a Fedora server right here. So let's start that up. So I'm going to use my QEMU script to do this. So I'm going to run uh, fed.image with a CD-ROM of ISO's Fedora server. And I'm going to show you the fake output to show you what you would type on your command line um, without my script. And that is this line right here. Uh, QEMU system x86-64. Uh, I tell it that we're going to use uh, the host system. So I'm running a, um, uh, an AMD 3600. Um, we're going to be using Vert.io. We're going to be passing it sound card stuff. A whole bunch of different stuff. If you want to um, pause the video here and type this into your system so that you've got it. Um, do that, or you can use uh, my script that I've that I've gone over in previous videos. So let's actually run it up. And I'm going to install it right there too. Uh, I just choose the U.S. English. And then what we're going to do here is make sure that we're installing to the drive. Uh, software selection. That's where we want to do the, uh, the minimal amount. So let's actually just pick a Fedora Server Edition. It seems that it's pretty minimal. Um, other operating systems like CentOS will give you uh, uh, the ability to configure it a lot more than this. Um, but Fedora Server is pretty minimal as it is. Done. Uh, pick the root password, very complex. And we do want to allow SSH login. Um, this machine is, is a throwaway machine, so don't worry about the security of it. And we're going to create a user. I like to call my user MM, and I give him a very as well and then we begin the install so i'm going to pause the video here and come back when we are when the uh, the installation is complete all right so the uh the uh, the system has been installed and we're going to give it uh, a reboot because we don't have a method of just shutting it down here say reboot it's back in it area and before it boots up again, I am just going to kill the QEMU system. And now I'm going to run it again. Um, just to make sure that it, it installed properly. Great, and I've got myself command line here. I'm gonna log in. I have an IP address. And I'm gonna do an update while I'm while I'm first booted up. So sudo dnf update y. And I'm gonna pause the video and we'll come back after it's uh, after it's updated. All right, so our updates are all done here. Uh, and now I'm just going to shut us down.
All right, so the next step that we need to take here is to boot up our installer uh, installer operating system um, with the hard drive of the, um, the intended LFS system. And we need to make sure that we're able to SSH into that machine as well. So uh, what I need to do is boot up um, the LFS, uh, sorry, the, um, the Fedora installer machine one more time and ensure that I have SSH enabled. So let me run that over here. I'm going to run my Fedora machine and I am going to uh, just run it up and ensure that we have SSH. And the way that you do that on Fedora is you simply do a system control, enable dash dash now SSH. Service to, because it's not SSH, it's SSHD. Okay, and we are going to shut down because we don't want to, now that we boot up, um, we're gonna be booting up um, with our LFS image. Uh, with our LFS hard drive, and we we don't want that uh, that user interface that keeps popping up on us. We just want to be able to access the installer operating system with SSH. So the way that I do that on my my script here is I will first say that we're going to be um, booting up fed.image, and that we're going to give it an additional hard drive of LFS dot image. Excuse me. We're going to detach it from. The, uh, the GNOME terminal. We're going to boot it up headless and we're going to give it uh, an SSH port of 1234 um, so that um, the virtual machine's SSH is running on port 22, but we're going to port forward our host machine um, 1234 to the virtual machine's port 22. And we're going to let this sleep for 15 seconds so that it, ha it has time to boot up. And then we are going to run an SSH command um, on port 1234 for the user MM at localhost. So what I'm doing is because I've port forwarded 1234 into port 22, I'm now going to SSH to my host machines port 1234, which port forwards to my, my virtual machines port 22. And I'm in. Um, not that you can really tell, but that's the idea. We're on the, the virtual machine and we can't really tell. Now, one more thing here that I maybe made a mistake uh, with is that you want your, your installer machine to have as many resources as possible. Um, I've only given it eight cores and, um, um, I've given it eight cores and uh, eight gigabytes of RAM. That should be enough. Um, if I'm going to reboot, I'm going to give it 12 cores and 12 gigabytes of RAM, but there's no need to do it right now. So um, I noticed that I don't have HTOP. I like to have HTOP and I probably don't have Vim either. And I like to have Vim. So let's get those installed as well. Pseudo DNF install Vim and HTOP. You don't need these things for building an LFS, but it's it, they're nice to have. All right, so let's clear this and we are now going to start installing um, LFS. So uh, all of this stuff, all this preamble, um, it's not really useful for your first time going through an LFS. Uh, like I said in the slides, uh, what I suggest that you do is that the first time you do an LFS, it's basically an exercise in copy and pasting. Uh, so you can kind of get your feet wet on, on how LFS works. Um, and it's going to be the second time that you actually care about all this stuff. Um, right. So where we specifically want to start is Section 2 Host System Requirements. 
And from now on, I'm just going to get rid of my, my LibreOffice notes here. And like I said, we are doing a lot of copy and pasting here. Um, one thing that you would have read about is that most of the time when you're doing an LFS, you're either running as root or you're running as a user called LFS that you make as you build LFS. So one thing that I think that I should do right now is that I should get myself into the root user. So I'm in root and I'm in the roots home directory, which is slash root. So let's uh, let's run this little script here that they suggest. So we're just going to copy it and paste it. Enter. So we are missing some packages. We seem to be missing some bin util stuff. Um, some bison stuff. Um, we don't have bison. Um, what else are we missing? Uh, we don't seem to have uh, GCC or G++. Uh, we don't have a bunch of um, make things like make M4 patch or Perl. Uh, we don't have this make info and we don't have G++. Uh, now the easy way on Fedora to get these things is to do a, a DNF group install for these packages. So we're going to do a group install for C development tools and library and for development tools. And this should give us most of what we need. Now, unfortunately, it also gives us a lot more that we don't actually need. So for example, we don't need um, LLVM right now. Uh, we don't need a bunch of GTK stuff. Um, it gives us more than we need, but you know, that's okay. So long as we've got a good internet pipe, we're gonna be fine here. All right, those two uh, those two group installs is done. Let's run this uh, this version check again. Bash version check. All right, what do we got? Um, we have Yak, so having this invalid uh, invalid option is is still um, indicative that we have Bison. Um, we have. Uh, everything but this make info. We've got our GCC, we've got grep, we've got, you know, patch, make, M4, Perl, Python, XZ, G++. It's just this make info that we don't have. So on, a, on a Fedora, let's do a DNF. What provides make info? Make info is provided by the text info package. So let's do a DNF install text info. All right, and run that script one more time. And it looks like we've got everything that we need. So we can start doing LFS. Okay, and moving to the next stage. And there is nothing here that we care about. Like I said, this is a copy and paste exercise. Uh, so moving on to the next. Information about how you want to configure your drive, um, but it's not telling us to actually do anything. So we don't worry about it quite yet. All right, so, uh, this is where you're going to need um, a bit of uh, knowledge about Linux itself. Um, 
this is uh, now uh, just follow along with me. Um, so this page is telling you how to partition your drive. Now, where is our drive? Our drive is lsblk. Our drive is, it's not SDA, it's SDB. So that's our 10 gigabyte um, Linux from scratch partition. So that's the, that's the one we're going to be using here. So um, to do um, disk partitioning, I like to use CF disk because it's a little bit, uh, it's got a, a, a terminal user interface um, and it's nicer than using F disk. So let's do a CF disk of um, SDB, dev SDB. And we're going to use DOS for this. Um, now I am going to give three partitions. Um, the first partition is going to be swap, and I'm going to give it only 512 megabytes of space for swap. Uh, the next partition is going to be boot, and I'm going to give it 256 part, um, gigabytes for boot. And the last partition is going to be um, the root file system, and I'm going to give it whatever's left. So new this one is going to be 512 m primary yes the next one is going to be 256 m yes and the last one is going to be whatever's left yes and then i go up to that swap partition and i say that its type is linux swap and then we write that out and then we quit and now if we take a look at LSBLK, we notice that SDB has got our stuff here. So I am going to then do uh, a makefs. I'm gonna copy and paste this. And this is our dev SDB2, because um, boot is going to be um, ext4, and then it's also ext443 or sdb3. Now I'm going to do this make swap for dev sdb1. All right, we're done that part. So this one is setting the LFS variable. So we're going to copy and paste this. Um, now, if you're doing an LFS in um, multi uh, multi stages where you shut off your your installer machine and come back to it later on, um, you're gonna have to make sure that you always do this export of L um, uh, export LFS um, to the mount LFS area. Um, they do give you suggestions on what to do here um, in order that you you um, have this set up properly. And this is one of the parts where um, I told you just to copy and paste and don't read things, but this page maybe you want to read because it tells you how you can set up your .bash profile to always make sure that you've got your, um, your uh, LFS um, variable set to mount LFS. So I'm, I'm actually going to do that. So I'm going to vim inside of my root .bash profile. And at the very end here, I am going to say that export LFS equals mount LFS. And right quit that. So I'm actually going to quit out of this now. And I'm going to SSH back in to get into root. And now I'm going to echo LFS to make sure that I've got that. And I don't. Okay, so. Why don't I? Do I have to source that? And maybe it's actually that you need to do um, bash RC on Fedora. So I'm going to do a bash RC here instead.
All right. So every time I run my root user now, I have this, this export LFI. All right, moving on. Mounting the new partition. So we are going to make sure that we actually have the mount LFS. So we copy and paste that. And then we do this command. And we're going to be doing this on SDB3. And to we have a boot partition here, so we are going to do a make dir pv of lfs boot, and then we are going to do a mount vt ext4 of dev sdb2 onto lfs slash boot. So that's that's kind of what was uh, explained here, except we're not using a um, a separate partition for USR. We're using a separate partition for boot. And we want to turn our swap on. So let's copy and paste this. And it's SDB1. Great, next page. Copy and paste this LFS sources. Then copy and paste, making it sticky. And now we're going to do the, uh, um, we're going to grab the sources using wget. So let's let's make sure that our Fedora machine actually has wget because sometimes Fedora is installed without it. So dnf install wget-y. Okay, it, it, it comes with it in, installed. So we need to get this uh, wget list. So we're going to copy link location and then wget um, paste so that we get the wget list. And then we're going to use this command to use wget list to get all of the sources. So I'd like to point out that this is one of the areas in which um, LFS is not secure. So you'll notice um, up, up here that the LFS website is not hosted by HTTPS, it's just HTTP, which means that it is um, susceptible to man in the middle attacks. Now we just got a list from them of a list of other websites and if I open up that wget list, we shall see that not all of these are secured with HTTPS either. Some of them are, but some of them are not. So that's just uh, something that you should be made aware, aware of. Uh, your grabbing of these sources um, could be man in the middle. Um, so we're still, we're still chugging along here. Um, I'll pause it and I'll come back when we've got all our sources. All right, so we grabbed all of our sources. The next thing that we want to do is grab MD5 sums um, that LFS says that these packages should have. Um, like I've stated previously, we are still susceptible right now to a man in the middle attack. Um, so doing this might not be as useful, really, but it's part of the uh, it's it, it's part of the experience. So let's just go with it and enjoy it. So we're going to copy the MD5 sums and we're going to wget that. And then we are going to copy and paste the checking of these sources. Oh, we need to actually move our MD5 sums. Sum.
five sums. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, so let's do. Uh... Yeah, there we go. Okay, so everything popped up and okay. So according to, um, according to the LFS website that could have been man in the middle, um, the sources that we got, several of them could have been man in the middle, but not all of them. Um, they they all have uh, MD5 sums that LFS expects us to have. So not perfect security, but we did kind of, we didn't uh, um, dot our I's, but we did cross our T's, if, if that makes sense. Anyways, we move on. Um, these are the, the, um, the websites at which you can go and grab the packages individually to see if there are uh, more secure ways of getting them if you're serious about making a security distribution. Um, however, like I said in, in the slides part of this this uh, this um, this discussion, um, you're not making this uh, LFS for security purposes. You're making this to learn about building Linux. So there is nothing more on this page here about. So we move on, and this is a list of patches. Um, there are some patches that LFS has made in order to fix up some bugs in the uh, the various. Um, the, the various um, packages that we've downloaded. And we have, we have actually downloaded those patches as part of the, uh, the wget list. So we can move on from here. And it'll tell us about final preparations. So we need to, it uh, looks like we're getting our directory layout done here. So copy and paste it. The first time we just, we just kind of, Copy and paste, and everything should go well because the LFS book is very well put together. Great. Paste this. Move on. So here is where you create that LFS user. Get the LFS user. And the password that I gave it was LFS. And we, that one. Um, we, we might as well do this. However, we're going to change our J profile to, uh, I've given us an N proc of eight. So I like to do 12. I like to do, um, 1.5 times the amount of, of threads that I have. All right, so this is this is where um, 
LFS kind of doesn't tell you exactly what to do. You kind of have to have a bit of knowledge about, about Linux here. What you're going to do here is you're going to get yourself into the sources directory, the LFS sources. And let's give ourselves an alias of LL equals LS uh, color. And here, what you're going to do is for the package that is being described here. So this is for bin utils. You're going to find bin utils in the LS. So here's bin utils. So you're going to take that and you're going to tar xf that. Simple as this, tar xf and the name of the package that you're you're going to be working on. And then once you tar xf that, there will be a directory. So right now you'll notice that there's no directory. We did the tar xf and now there is that directory that we go into. And it's going to be the name of the uh, the package that we just untarred with the exception that dot tar dot xz is gone or dot tar dot x uh, gz is gone or bz2 or something like that. So go into it. So go into bin utils and now we're going to copy and paste. So what we just did there is we compiled up the first, um, the first pass of bin utils. Bin utils is used as a measuring stick to determine how long your the, the the how long the compilation phase of LFS is going to take you. So they call bin utils a one SBU, and I forget what SBU stands for, but of course if I read the book it'd actually tell me um, software build unit maybe. Um, but so that's one software build unit, however long it just took, and you, you saw that on screen. Um, actually, it, it, al it also includes doing the configure and the make install as well. But most of the work is, is done in that make. So that is, that is one SBU. That means that the next package of GCC will take 11 times longer than what bin utils just took. That makes sense. However, we're not done. We're not finished with bin utils yet. So I'm going to go back. So we've just completed the make install. What we need to do right now is we need to go back up out of the, the build directory, actually back to LFS sources. And then we want to remove the directory of bin utils, not the tarball, because we're going to be using the tarball again, but we want to get rid of that directory that that the tarball created so we remove that and now you'll notice in the ll that we still have we still have the bin utils tarball but we no longer have the directory all right so i am now going to move on to gcc and this is going to be um i'm not going to do the entire gcc here because it does take 11 times longer than than um than uh, bin utils and I think you've gotten the idea of how I suggest you go through your LFS the first time. Basically, you are just copying and pasting with the exception of untarring these things. So we are going to go through GCC here. So let's find what the GCC package is called. GCC here. Copy that, tar xf. go into the GCC directory and start copying paste. 
copying and pasting. And just one more note, you'll notice that I'm pasting onto the command line and then I'm, I'm having to press enter for the final command to be run. Uh, you're not seeing that because you can't see my hands and my keyboard. But right now what happens when I paste this, it runs the make, the make dear dash v build, but it doesn't actually commit the command cd build until I press enter. That makes sense. Go in here. So I'm going to stop it here because this is going to take uh, quite some time to get finished of GCC. But I hope I've given you um, uh, enough of a, a head start on how you can start doing an LFS for yourself. Um, I want to, to reiterate, the first time you do an LFS, just copy and paste. Just take this, put it into your window, paste it. Take this, put it into your window and paste it, et cetera, et cetera. Move on to the next one. Uh, copy, copy the bold stuff that's in these blocks. Copy it, move it into your window and paste it. And you're going to be fine so long as you do that. It's the second time around that you should start reading what exactly you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, and that's an exercise for you. That's where the learning is. This first time is just to get used to the process because um, LFS, there's a lot going on to it and you don't want to just um, do it, do all the learning and all the, um, all the getting used to it all in one shot. You want to break it up into smaller pieces. Um, and that's why I believe that this is the best way to do it. Uh, so I'm going to end the video now. Um, please, uh, leave, uh, comments in the, the, this, the, the comment section down below. If you have any questions, I know that there's probably going to be a lot about LFS. Um, a good place to learn about LFS is actually on a, a subreddit called, um, Linux from scratch. Um, so our Linux from scratch, and you'll find a bunch of people talking about Linux from scratch there. Um, a lot of the errors that I see, uh, people asking for help, uh, is because, they are not copying and pasting. They are, they are um, running on bare metal. And when they run on bare metal, they type in these commands and they make a mistake. So for example, they, they get to this code section and they might do make headers, find this, but they, they forget to put the star here, right? They, they mistype and they forget the star. So that cascades down. So it, you're going to be fine here, but you know, like, Three hours later, when you're doing something important that needs this package, you're going to run into problems. So that's why I highly suggest you run this from QEMU images uh, and you just copy and paste while you're in an SSH, SSH shell. If you do that and you follow the instructions, you're going to be fine. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something about how to do an LFS. I hope you've learned something about Linux and uh, have a good afternoon, evening, or morning, depending on where you are. Bye-bye.